Brett Creamer, The Rapture. This is Pat Love getting ready to read his dream once again. I had a dream where I was on the ground, right? Then suddenly I heard the most amazing music. It is something like I've never heard on earth. And it's a bit hard to describe. Imagine every voice in heaven and on earth, along with every single instrument in heaven, as well as on earth, playing and singing the same note and building into a grand crescendo. It was so loud and overwhelming, yet so beautiful at the same time. As the music played, I was suddenly transported up into the air. The sky was so blue with just a few clouds around. As I raised up into the sky, I could see Jesus galloping towards me in a white on a white horse. His robe was blowing in the wind behind him, and there were thousands and thousands of saints. They were riding on white horses too. <laughs> As his horse galloped, rolling clouds formed under the horse's feet as if the clouds were rolling out before him and making a pathway of solid ground for the horses to run on. As fast as the horses went, the clouds were right in front rolling out. It was the most amazing sight I had ever seen. And I know, according to scripture, that when he comes back after the tribulation, he will be bringing the saints with him to rule and reign here on the earth. I felt like he was showing me his seriousness and his might. As he came back to the earth to finalize all things. It was awesome. That was Brent's dream. Isn't it beautiful? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I know you'd like to see it too. I know I would. I've been asking God, I want to be, you know, tell me to go outside when you start coming. But anyway, listen, you guys, that's why we need to be ready. I mean, I don't want to miss out on that. And the scary part is, if you don't love one another, if you have hatred for anybody, if you have resentment, check your heart. If you have bitterness, if you refuse to forgive, if you refuse to love and honor, if you don't honor your parents and you, you treat them like, like crap under your feet, if you abuse your wife, you beat her down, you beat your kids, you, you, you verbally castrate your children's self-esteem. Think about what you're doing to each other. <clears throat> because God, basically, if I would really put it in layman's and street terms, if you don't love them, you sure don't love me. Because how can you love God who you can't see? And when you don't love man that you do see. And you can't get into heaven without love in your heart. There will be many of you saying, Lord, Lord. But hey, look what I did for you. I did some miracles. I spoke in tongues. I worked, you know, wonders in your name. And Jesus will look at you and say, I don't know who the heck you are. I never knew you. Because he's not in your heart. There's no way God will cohabit with hatred. There is no way God will cohabit with prejudice, with abuse, with murder, with violence and strife. Oh, he won't cohabit with that. He won't cohabit with the heart of a liar. Think about all that. Take your heart before God. If you've never given it to the Lord Jesus Christ, accept him into your heart. Because I'm telling you, you cannot get good to get with God. You have to get with God to get good. 
So the way you get with God, you ask the Lord Jesus into your heart. You accept him as your Lord and Savior. After you do that, you ask God to fill you with his Holy Spirit. That is what you need to change your nature. So that when you look at the one you've hated all your life, you suddenly realize the hate is abating and you're starting to feel warmer towards them. And a love begins to develop where hatred ruled. That is called the new nature that is given through the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit in your life. So anyway, you want to be able to make it in. You don't want anything hindering you or blocking your pathway to heavenly places with your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, do you? Think about that now and pray. God bless you. Get your hearts right. We all have to do that on a daily basis. I don't pray to God without asking him first to forgive me for my sins. Because sometimes we could be committing a sin or we could be doing something that he's not happy with and we haven't come to grips with it or come to terms with that. Some of us live in denial when it comes to our own dastardly deeds. So stay in God's face. He'll keep you straight if you are willing.